Hey, I understand you came through with flying colors on that last case. Can't guarantee you anything so flashy, but we do have a victim. Assault and battery, en route to the hospital. Scene's already been compromised. Paramedics all over the place, but they had their job to do and we have ours. First officer says the building manager lists the tenants as an unmarried cohabitating couple, Shane and Connie. Reports no eyewitness, but neighbors heard loud arguing and then a scream and maybe, maybe a gunshot. Cool bug. If you catch it, I'm sure Grissom would love to see it. See the direction these drops are pointing? Follow the arrow. Blood drops heading out this door. Elongated shapes suggest the person was moving quickly. door wasn't broken in. Neither was the window. Either she let someone in or they had a key. You want a different tool for that. Damage done by the bullet appears to be recent. There's some sort of material on this bullet. Maybe it passed through something? Things got rough. It's a lot of blood for the victim living through the attack. We need to check this sheet for trace evidence. Fibers from the perp's clothing. Lots of transfer during an attack. You want a different tool for that. You want a different tool for that.
quantity of blood suggests an attack with a sharp object, consistent with a knife. Here's the happy couple. If our Vic is Connie, we need to notify Shane. No need mentioning that stats put him automatically on top of the suspect list. Hey, it's Sarah calling. Brass said to tell you that Connie Roth, the Vic, has been taken to Skylar Progressive Hospital. Sidle out. Skylar Hospital, huh? That's my old alma mater, where Lindsay made her debut. We can head there now, or keep processing at the scene. Your call. This may provide Shane some company on that suspect list. Phone off the nightstand. Blood smearing indicates Vig slid off the bed. Who was looking for what here? Vic looking for a weapon? Perp after valuables? Nurse says our Vic is in critical condition, but likely will stabilize. Rape kit was run, and no sexual activity is indicated. Not tonight, anyway. Seems Connie is pregnant. Wounds are consistent with a knife attack. More than a few landed right to the chest. We don't have permission for this, yet. Interesting note on her chart. Two years ago, she was a bone marrow donor for a young child in Spain. HLA tissue matches are rare among Caucasians. The world needs more good donors. It matches, but you are matching an unknown against an unknown, so we don't know anything. Always try to match to known samples.
Connie's a cocktail waitress at the Hot Rod Hotel Casino. Shane's employed there as well as a casino host. He's on probation at the casino, though it's not stated why. He does have one DUI, but no other criminal record. Just an hour before the assault, our Vic got a call from an Eve. Let's have Sarah take a crack at the names on this call history. Maybe we can turn a lead. This is fine grade wool, often used to make clothing, like men's suits. Once you got enough evidence, I'll hit up a judge. This area is set aside for high rollers, not really designed to be CSI friendly. And casinos are very fussy about allowing searches without a warrant. So for now, it's meet and greet time with our top suspect. Excuse me, are you Shane? That's right. Aren't you Catherine Willows with the crime lab? That's right. My partner and I need a few moments of your time. Mind if we start with a question or two? Well, it's serious, committed. We live together, and I guess you could say we're engaged. She's a waitress here, but it's not against casino policy. L listen, what's this about? Uh, around 8.45 at the apartment, leaving for work? I'm not liking the sound of this. Is Connie all right? What the hell is wrong, Miss Willows? Shane, Connie is in critical condition at Skylar Progressive. Multiple stab wounds. I need to see her. I, I need to see her now. You should have told me immediately. Someone should have called. You'll have to excuse me. We'll give you a lift. Hospital's our next stop. Horrible. Terrible. She's the greatest girl. Who the hell could have done this vicious thing? We're working on finding out. You can help by answering a few questions. Of course. Anything. Yes. Like I said, I, I left for the casino around 8.45pm, and, and before that I, I was home. Sleep most of the day, well, 
Well, you know all about working night shift. Did we? Well, yes, I suppose we did. Um, Connie's been after me since we first moved in together to, well, tie the knot. Not exactly hard in this town, right? But I want us to be set, financially, before we do. Have enough for our own home and a real marriage. Of course I was. And that's another bone of contention. Here she is, preggers, and I'm saying, wait till we're ready. But you gotta understand, I work around wealth, constantly surrounded by it, and then come home to a ratty little apartment. I deserve better. Connie deserves better. We deserve better. It must be some random thing. Some druggie who broke in looking for money. Because Connie is a sweetheart. Making friends comes easy to her. That's why she's so good at her job. Eve? No. No, that doesn't ring a bell. I know all of her girlfriends, I think. And there's no Eve. Of course, she meets tons of people at work, so... Gun? Hell no, that's not our style. Not mine, and certainly not Connie's. Bullet in the wall? My god, wh what happened in our place, anyway? If there was a bullet hole in a wall in there, I never saw it. Was it, was it painted over or something from some other tenant? Probably Sarah again. Hey, remember that Eve on the cell phone? Well, this Eve's no girl. Shorthand for Everett. As in Everett Brower, the Texas Energy King? As in multi-millionaire Everett Brower? And guess who's one of the high rollers in town? Sidle out. So, Sarah says it's Everett Brower, huh? I remember him. Got big play in the media when he married a foxy young thing who could have been his granddaughter, but wasn't. We can head over whenever you're ready. Well, of course she does. He's a regular customer of mine. How has his name come up? Uh, I... I can't think. It strikes me as odd. He's always been fond of Connie and somewhat, well, flirtatious. Harmless, really, but he finally stopped paying so much attention to her. Um, no, out of respect to his new wife, Nicole. She didn't appreciate her husband paying attention to an attractive waitress, and who can blame her? No problem. Whatever it takes to get this creep. I don't have anything else for you. Mr. Brower, Catherine Willows with the Las Vegas Crime Lab. Thank you for seeing us. My partner and I have a few questions for you. I'm always anxious to lend support to law enforcement. If you doubt me, just ask your sheriff about my contributions to his campaign. <laughs> this is my lovely wife, Nicole, but you've probably seen her on television and in the tabloids. Whatever. Now, just how can I be of assistance? Certainly I know her. Her significant other, Shane, is our host here at the casino, and Connie works as a waitress. Very efficient, pleasant girl. You called her? He was probably calling for Shane. My loving husband knows that if he went around ringing up sluts like Connie Roth, I'd suffocate him in his sleep. Darling, please. She's a jealous little thing. You'll have to forgive her. Lucky for you, Nicole, that Connie wasn't suffocated last night. But she was stabbed. Stabbed? Listen, that was BS before. I don't love the woman, but I would never stoop to violence. Excuse me, I'm more than willing to cooperate, but I must ask, why have you come here? Do you consider me a suspect? Because if that's the case, I really would prefer legal representation to be present. These are routine questions. Well, now, fraternizing is an unpleasant word with unpleasant connotations. Now, my wife is correct. I was calling for Shane, who is my official liaison with the casino. I have both their cell numbers, and Connie's reception is superior to his. All very innocent, Miss Willows. 
Nothing earth-shaking. I wanted to request Shane send out for a rather exotic brand of bourbon that I've been wanting to sample. He does all varieties of tiny little courtesies for me of that nature. Now I'm sure, but my corporation does have its limits. I believe heartily in the privacy of the individual citizen. And if you want to search my premises, you'll need a reason that doesn't just convince me, but a judge. This? Just a little cut from a glass I broke. Taking some medicine. Clumsy of me, but honestly, for all the money we spend at this place, you might think they provide decent glassware. Listen, when I called her a slut before, I was just talking. When we first came here, after our honeymoon, I was jealous of the attention Everett paid Connie. I mean, he knew her before he knew me. Since I made my displeasure known, Everett's made a point of not flirting with her. And Connie's been fine, very friendly, but just business-like with my husband. She and I are, what's the word? Cordial. What happened to her anyway? She all right? I certainly don't wish her ill, and I really do hope you find the person responsible. I'll make sure Everett sends flowers. As well as you ever know the help. He's very attentive to Everett's needs, and mine for that matter. Whatever you ask of him, he does with a smile. You know, I really wouldn't mind personally, but my husband has a thing about privacy. He hates it that I'm in the media all the time. Anyway, no DNA without a warrant. Sorry. Hey guys, I ran a full background check on the Vic. Interested? You bet. Lived in Vegas most of her life. Cocktail waitress for several years now. Top in her line, premium shifts, high roller venues. Which opens doors on all kinds of suspects. Any criminal record? One shoplifting offense when she was 16, but ever since she's been clean. Made a mistake early on, straightened out it seems. No surprise, one felony in the casino can't hire you. Thanks, Sarah. So, it was Shane who left us that trail of blood. I'll see what I can do. Check back. He's on his way to interrogation now. Nothing to tell. I told you all of it. Same as always. Pressure on me to marry her, make an honest woman of her. I, I keep telling her, when I carry her across the threshold, it'll be a real one, not some cheap apartment. Sure I am. My God, don't you people get it? I want to find this sick bastard more than you do. Trail of... Oh. Oh my god. I can see how bad this looks, but honest. Hell, it really did slip my mind. I, I was storming out of there, all pissed off, and must have scraped my damn elbow on something. Didn't notice it was bleeding till I was out in the car. You're right. It does look bad. Yeah, gives me plenty of time. And with us arguing, I was glad for the excuse. Casino manager says you showed up 20 minutes late for your shift. What happened to having plenty of time? I already told you, I had a bloody elbow. I stopped at a drugstore and bought some bandages and went out to the car and cleaned up, wrapped it up. And frankly, I used the time to cool down. I have to be presentable in my job. The customers I deal with are important people. Or did you argue with Connie and things got out of hand? So you got some clothing from the car, came back and stabbed her. Then it took a while to get cleaned up afterwards, so you were late for your shift. You think I would try to kill Connie? The woman I'm gonna marry? <laughs> then you're sick, 
as sick as the son of a bitch responsible for this tragedy. Hope I'm not interrupting anything. Got some good news. Connie pulled through. Nurses say she's recovering well, eating and talking. Might want to head down to the hospital before visiting hours are up. She's a real piece of work, Nicole. Loves to lord it over the little people, since she used to be one herself, I guess. Anyway, I just do whatever she asks of me, short of illegal. I either keep the customer satisfied, or I'm out on the street. A couple of difficult patrons complained about me. I call it unfair, but a host can be replaced. High rollers are at a premium. Yes, thank you. I feel a little out of it. I'll try. It's kind of a blur, but I remember Shane and me. We had a bad fight. Argument, I mean. And he ran out really angry with me. I started crying and, and must have flopped on the bed, fell asleep. Next thing I know, somebody in black is, is hovering over me like I'm having a nightmare. Only I'm awake, and he has a knife, and it's slashing and cutting, and it hurts, but I fight back, and then he runs out. Not really. Covered head to toe in a black stocking mask and sweatshirt, I guess, and pants. But it must have been Everett. It's just a feeling I have, an impression. But beyond that, he knows we keep a spare key outside. He was kind enough to drive me home once when I was sick. I had forgotten my keys at the casino and he saw me use the spare. Of course, I didn't think anything of it. Never mind, this is crazy. I shouldn't have said anything. Neighbors heard a gunshot, which we've confirmed by a bullet lodged in the wall of your apartment. We didn't find a gun, though. Do you have one? Actually, yes. Shane doesn't know about it. He doesn't approve of firearms. But sometimes I'm alone in that apartment, hours at a time, and you can see needing protection is no joke. Anyway, I, anyway, I went for the gun in my nightstand drawer after I pushed the attacker away. I fired at the figure. Don't know if I got him or not. I don't have a license for it, and Shane's against them, like I said. I was panicked and calling for an ambulance, so much going on. I'm not sure. I think I stuck it behind the nightstand. We need to compare it against blood found at the scene. By all means. By all means. A knife, maybe six or seven inch blade, with straight edges. Couldn't see the handle, the color. Fortunately, the knife entered at a perpendicular angle, causing the ribs to stop further penetration, preventing damage to vital organs such as the heart and lungs. That's how you were able to survive. We're looking for potential trace evidence from your assailant, blood, Fibers, anything. Please. Nothing. Sorry, everything is a little fuzzy. So much happening. You've been a big help. We'll check back. In the meantime, if you think of anything else, such as why you think Everett may have been the attacker, please send for us.
That's the CVS test I got back the other day. It's a boy. Pardon me for asking. That's a risky, expensive procedure. Well, casino benefits include full medical. I just hope the little guy hangs in there. I thank God he survived the attack. Well, no big shock here. Connie's blood links her to the crime scene, but nobody else's blood except Shane's is turned up. If Shane's not the attacker, the real assailant slashed and flashed that blade without getting a scratch. Connie said the gun was in the bedroom behind the nightstand. Let's take a look. Actually, I'm not surprised. What would have surprised me is if we missed a gun on our initial processing pass. You got enough evidence for a search. I'll hit up a judge. This is the thanks I get for cooperating with you people. And after the support I lent your sheriff, what in heaven's name could you be looking for here? I'm sure the sheriff is grateful for your good citizenship, Everett. We're looking for fibers, weapons, blood, and a sample of your DNA. This is outrageous. I really should contact my attorney, but goddammit, let's get on with it. I don't have anything else to say to you people. We don't have permission for this, yet. Let's test the blood first. I'll use the hematrace kit to ID this blood. Pink for animal, blue for human. Pink, definitely animal blood. Maybe I should have told you, I like my prime rib very, very rare. Man's handkerchief, ready for mending. Somehow Nicole doesn't strike me as the seamstress type. I'm thinking a mouse didn't make a hole in that hanky. Let's check it out. Mm -hmm. 
Nice work. Black wool overcoat. Too small for Everett, but... Nicole? Don't see any blood, but this garment might shed fibers all right. Three fifty seven Magnum. One round fired, apparently. It's not uncommon to fire thirty eight rounds from these since they're cheaper. Look here, they're thirty eights, all right. The story is a legal and fully registered one. As for the missing bullet, we stopped in the desert to enjoy the scenery. A rattlesnake was giving my wife the eye and I shot the thing. Law against that? Not when you miss it. He went his own way, darling. And you said yourself it was a hell of a rush. I don't have anything else to say to you people. The pattern of scorching, here, and lack of tearing, more like a cigarette burn than a gunshot. Nice work. Let's fire off a round in the ballistics lab. They are both 38 rounds, but the striations don't match. I didn't bring this up with Connie, not at this stage of her recovery. But look at this. Take a look at these stab wounds. The direction of entry is upward against the rib cage could be self-inflicted, but why would she do that? Suicide attempt?
Hey, what's up? He's on his way to interrogation now. I don't have anything else for you. I should have told you this before, but I remembered wrong. I wasn't trying to deceive you. When I checked my purse earlier, the gun was inside. I must have stuffed it in there when I was all traumatized and bleeding. And the ambulance guys brought the purse along. I'm really sorry. I do remember that clearly. After I was attacked, I managed to get off a shot as the guy was leaving. I couldn't see if I hit him or not. Then the attacker was gone and I just couldn't take pursuit. Nice work. Let's fire off around in the ballistics lab. Okay, that's one question answered. Let's move on. This coat fits the crime scene evidence all right, but it doesn't fit Everett Brower. She's on her way to interrogation now. Really? Now that's impossible. Oh, oh, that's right. That cold snap last week? I loaned Connie that coat and she gave it back to me the next day. Maybe you took it back by force. That's right. She didn't return my jacket and I tracked her down and killed her over it. Why do you waste your time and worse mine on such stupidity? I don't even know where she lived. Good friends, are you? I told you we were cordial. She'd done favors for me. And my husband, of course. Surely you remember how cold it was last week. Wednesday, wasn't it? She was underdressed and I helped her out. No good deed goes unpunished. Helping out at the homeless shelter? No, wait. Shopping. <laughs> at the mall. Check it out if you don't believe me. Oh, I believe you were shopping. But we may check up on that date, in case you're confused. Hey, just got a call from the hospital. Terrible night for Connie. She lost her baby to miscarriage. She's in stable condition now, but it's obviously a tough loss. Might want to check up with her when you can. I don't have anything else to say to you people.
My baby, my baby boy, my little son, we, we've lost him. I, I appreciate that, and I, I appreciate how you're trying to help. I only wish I'd defended myself better. That, that the bastard who killed my baby was dead instead. She says she loaned you a black coat. Is that true? Yes. Yes, it may have been tossed on the bed at some point. She was just pretending to be nice, you know. At heart, she's a snobby bitch, but she wanted her precious husband to think she was making an effort to get along with me. Has she ever been to your place? Are you kidding? Uh, yes. Actually, it's right here. Looks like the hospital lab did a few tests. Determined the cause was blood loss. I'm so sorry. Yes, my poor baby boy. I don't have anything else for you. Sorry. For as many curves as I've been thrown over the years, this one I did not see coming. Did anybody guess Everett Brower was the father of Connie's kid? Well, I sure didn't. But everybody in this case is guilty of a motive, at least. If Everett was cheating on Nicole, he could have tried to kill Connie before his fraternity and their relationship got out. And if Nicole found out her husband was cheating, and the new woman in his life had a bun in the oven, well... Either way, Shane's still smack in the middle. His girlfriend's pregnant with another man's child. And with Everett's money, think of the blackmail possibilities. Let's talk to the suspects again before reviewing the evidence. Hey, what's up? He's on his way to interrogation now. Connie? Have an affair with that wrinkled old son of a bitch? Are you people out of your minds? She's on her way to interrogation now. Pregnancy? Why would I know about that? You have a mistaken idea about her and Shane and Everett and me. They're just employees at a casino. I wouldn't exactly be invited to a baby shower. I didn't hear that right. What are you saying? Everett and... and Connie? That doesn't even make any sense. That's not even a bad joke. Why, that bastard. That lecherous old... I'll kill him. I swear, I will kill him! Well, yes, I admit that, but surely you understand the privacy issues. And did you say, was? Oh no, oh my God, my son, my poor, poor baby son. Oh my God, and that poor girl. This is horrible, terrible. Does this mean we're dealing with attempted murder? I'm afraid not, at least not according to the law. The unborn child would need to be at least 20 weeks in gestation or 400 grams weight to add another felony count and your son was under on both. The relationship, and you must believe this, you must understand this, is strictly one of business. She is a responsible, intelligent young woman 
and I approached her to be the surrogate mother for my son by artificial insemination. She signed a, a non-disclosure agreement, although she would eventually tell Shane, of course. An unfortunate byproduct of this arrangement is Shane's belief that the child is his. But the child will, was to be, turned over to me and Nicole. The financial rewards for Miss Roth are considerable. One million dollars. Half upon successful insemination, half upon delivery of my healthy child. This is a very delicate aspect of this matter, and I really beg your discretion, please. Nicole does not know. You see, she's pregnant herself with my daughter, and, and I intended to tell her much later. I was planning to take her away to Paris and explain the situation carefully, you know what I'm saying? And with great respect for her situation, I was confident that she would see the benefits of raising both kids. Had Nicole somehow discovered my plans, I can assure you I would have been the first to know. She almost certainly would have confronted me with her displeasure. But my need for an heir overrides any such concern. Well, our concern is finding the brutal attacker who did this. And your wife is still a suspect. As I say, she's an intelligent young woman. And I was aware that she and Shane had dreams of a better life. You see, I'm already living on borrowed time. I have a cancer that will kill me within the year, and I want, well, I need, I need a son to carry forward my name and my legacy. Nicole indeed is pregnant with a girl. Now I will love that child and provide for that child, but I'm old school. I'm afraid for me, an heir is male. Not just my blood, but my name continuing on. Connie is a lovely young lady and was willing to help me make my dreams come true. A procedure called PGD, pre-implantation genetic diagnosis, I think it was, was used to help make certain that she would bear me a male child. It's an expensive procedure, but has a 95% success rate, and money was no object. I have nothing else to say. He's on his way to interrogation now. I don't have anything else for you. I'm... I'm sorry, but I signed a contract of confidentiality, even in the event of a miscarriage. I have certain financial benefits from Everett that would be negated if I revealed. You need to understand that I would have told Shane. I would have told him much, much later on, in the final weeks. Told him I was doing it for him. So, you were having another man's baby for Shane. Shane is the one obsessed with money, not me. 
We've been together forever, and yet he still won't take the leap, as they say. Not until we are financially independent. Well, I found a way to get us a million bucks, and we would have a long, happy life together with our own... our own healthy babies. I... I can't be sure. But I had this feeling he'd changed his mind, that he'd panicked. Nicole is an awful person, and if she found out, or if Everett was even afraid she'd found out, yes, he might have attacked me. We know two things for sure. Someone attacked you, and we're going to find that someone. Nice bug hunting. Let's get back to the investigation. Hey, what's up? He's on his way to interrogation now. Mr. Brower and Connie both confirmed that the child was conceived through artificial insemination and a procedure to assure the child would be male and provide Mr. Brower with an heir. I don't know. I, I don't know what to believe. Maybe it was an affair. Maybe... Maybe you should see this photo I found. It rubbed me the wrong way and I ripped the thing up, but... But I just couldn't throw it away, either. You'll have to excuse me. I... I have a lot to sort out.
That luxury suite is off limits for a cocktail waitress like Connie. And I'm wondering just how artificial that insemination really was. Hey, what's up? She's on her way to interrogation now. Well, his desperation to have a male heir has no boundaries, I'll give you that. But he has always been a lecherous old hound, long as I've known him, in need of a short leash. His idea of artificial insemination is not using a condom. He claims it's not the result of an affair that this was an artificial insemination involving a special procedure guaranteeing the child's sex would be male. I, I guess it makes a sad, sick kind of sense. He's so goddamn desperate for a son. What is this, 1860? Our daughter, my daughter, will be as good as any, any boy. And we could try again, couldn't we? But he couldn't wait, could he? Selfish, old, greedy, controlling son of a bitch that he is. Hey guys, Brass came through on the security cam photos. I brought them for you to take a look at. Great, we've just finished interviewing everybody again. New information, including probably some new lies. We need to sort the truth from the chaff. With Everett admitting to a formal agreement with Connie, we've got a potential paper trail. Let's start sniffing. Time on the tape shows Nicole getting back shortly after the attack carrying a shopping bag. I didn't see that bag in the search, did you? And look how she's holding it, under her arm. You got enough evidence for a search. I'll hit up a judge. I have nothing else to say. Connie had a one-way ticket to paradise. And Everett hired someone to find out just such tidbits about her. Was he paranoid she'd keep the cash and the kid? Marriage contract, standard prenup with a wealthy type like Everett. But this is unusual. Nicole agrees to do whatever it takes to bear him a son, including abort a female child. That's a nasty add-on to Dearly Beloved. These are serious medications. 
Everett's story about his terminal condition appears to be true. Encrypted document. Let's check it out. Not much there. Nice job being thorough. That sure puts a million dollar in million dollar baby. Big dough for a surrogate mom. She's already got half down. Maybe Connie decided she'd rather have half a mill and her child than a whole mill and no kid. So Connie gets half of her million dollar mother load and Everett hires a PI to keep an eye on his investment. Maybe old Everett was paranoid and Connie'd skip with the cash and the precious cargo in her tummy. He's on his way to interrogation now. I hardly think an explanation is called for. <laughs> I mean, look at it. That's a picture of two people sharing a happy moment. Well, Miss Roth had just confirmed that she was indeed having a boy. There was a 5% chance otherwise, as I explained, but she had just received a check for a half a million dollars. I think we both had a right to be smiling. Leaving town? Now you've lost me. You had just paid her half a million dollars, and now she was booking with your baby, not to mention money. You went from handing out mental cigars to rage at being double-crossed. Desperate, you grabbed a knife at the casino, rushed to her apartment, and tried to get rid of her and the evidence she was carrying inside her. You're the one who sounds desperate, Miss Willows. Flinging accusations without thought or care? I don't need to justify hiring someone to protect my investment, and I certainly don't need to build a case against killing the woman who was carrying my son. You'd have me killing my son. It's insulting. It's absurd. If she asked for more money, she'd have got it. It's that simple. But she's no blackmailer. Do you think I would pick less than sturdy, trustworthy stock to carry my child? You know what? I've suffered all the indignities from you people that I can abide. Searching my hotel room, harassing my wife, exposing my secrets. I may be a dying man, Miss Willows, but I'm not without my resources. I suggest you find the real killer or suffer the consequences. God, and now this nonsense? All right, Nicole dry cleans down near everything. She's a cleanliness freak, obsessive about it. Even the night of that awful attack, she made dry cleaning a priority. 
I can give you the name of the service if you want another wrong tree to bark up. I'll track down the dry cleaner in question. Let's also check the luxury suite to see if it's been dropped off already. Cleaning service said they just made a delivery. Hotel housekeeping confirmed they brought it to the room. Brass cleared us to take what we find based on our original warrant. Should be around here somewhere. Well, according to the cleaners, this is everything Nicole dropped off to them. Pity we got to it after the drying service had their way with it. Time for a closer look. This USB card must have been left in the pocket. Good thing Nicole picked a thorough cleaning service. Rip's been mended. Possible fiber evidence. And we can test for blood stains. Try again with something similar. Unusual reaction. Diluted blood from Connie, maybe? That puts this blouse at the crime scene at the time of the attack. And somehow, I can't picture Everett in it. Okay, if Nicole was carrying this photo, she likely suspected an affair between her husband and Connie for some time. And she could have known Connie was expecting by chatting up Shane. Nicole must be in solid with the casino security to have that photo at all. And I wonder if she's how it wound up in Shane's hands. She's on her way to interrogation now. And why would I want to kill a non-entity like her? Because you thought she was having an affair with your husband. And she was pregnant with his child. Shane probably told you Connie was having a boy, and you knew how much that meant to your husband. I... I didn't care about Connie. She wasn't worth killing. It was the bastard that she was carrying. It, he was the threat. Understand? I, I knew Everett had been meeting with her, talking with her. You could tell they were sharing some, some secret. So I got in good with the security guys and asked them to watch for Everett and that bitch together. Get me some photos if possible. And they got me that juicy one. I guess I jumped to the wrong conclusion but I was right that Everett was betraying me. What difference does it make whether he impregnated her or some needle? I was bearing his child, but our daughter wasn't good enough for him. He had to have a son, even if it was with some lowlife. I had to protect my little girl and myself. I found out where she lived, waited outside for Shane to leave for work, and got in using the spare key. I started in on Connie, on her 
on her baby. Stabbed four or five times, but the blade wouldn't go through, and she woke up screaming and clawing and fighting. I freaked out and ran off, but before I got out there, I heard a loud bang, a shot, and the faintest tug on my clothes. So I... I took the clothes to the dry cleaners. They were... They were dirty. And Everett? We're just friends who made a business arrangement, period. You understand, don't you? Pregnant with his child. And he's... He's betraying us both. He has a few good years left. We could have tried again. I could have had that stupid special procedure to have his precious boy. He doesn't have a year, Nicole. With his time running out, he panicked too. Do you know what he really intended to do? To adopt that child and raise the boy as your daughter's brother, he'd have told you when he felt the time was right. Well, you and he will have a child. Only it'll be born not in some European clinic, but within prison walls. This isn't a case of rich and poor. It's a case of poor communication. Nicole had it all. A rich husband planning to leave her and their daughter a fortune. Connie and Shane had everything too. They loved each other, and even their financial dreams could have come true if she'd shared with Shane the secret of her sudden pregnancy. Broke or flush, couples have to communicate. Or it all breaks down. Pleasure working with you on this one. You can get your evaluation from Grissom in his office. All right, here's your evaluation. For evidence, you found everything there was to find. For hints, you didn't need any at all. And at the end of the day, you followed the evidence to a clear conclusion. I can't argue with that. Outstanding work. You've investigated every possible angle on this case. I'm giving you the highest mark available. Doesn't happen often, but I'm very impressed. And by the way, thank you for all the new specimens you found for my collection. I'm recommending you for an extra bonus. Great hunting. Thank <laughs> you.